So, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> I uh, welcome uh, to the oh, oh uh, talk <laughs> or auction square or I don't know. I uh, let's call it auction square or oh. oh. Um, long time no see. So the last time I was I gave a academy talk. I was checking. I think it was in Gran Canaria. That was like 13 years ago? Something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, it, quite a long time um, without uh, talking to you guys. Um, so, uh, and OK, it's great to be back. Uh, great to talk to, and see everyone. And maybe let's see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, so me, me. Um, my name is Nuno. Um, uh, that is my email for things non KDAV. I have another email for KDAV things that is just like that one, but with KDAV. Um, who am I? Okay, so I'm 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 a designer. I used to be a civil engineer. Then I started uh, doing things with KDE, just using it. Uh, there were a couple of icons that I didn't like. I made new icons. People liked it. And 20-something years after, apparently I'm a user, UX, UI designer, I do QML, lots of things, um, and lots of things KDE related. I used to be way more involved in KDE when it was um, uh, on the on the first days of Plasma when uh, and the oxygen stuff, uh, which I'm still the current maintainer. Uh, not the best maintainer, but uh, improving on that. Um, so, so yeah, uh, a little bit of experience on, on KD. And hopefully, most of you guys know me or heard about me. But if you don't, just bear with me. So this talk. Um, when I was thinking about doing this talk, because I, last year I uh, I announced that I was going to reboot Oxygen and do something around it. I wasn't too sure about it. It was mostly a collection of ideas that I had uh, developed over the years uh, about what I could do next in this space. Um, and uh, like all good ideas and all great plans, things fall fell apart. They don't go according uh, to your plans. And this talk is a little bit about this process, this here that is passed. I want to talk a little bit about um, the objectives and ideas that I had for Oxygen Squared or OO, uh, the reality. And I think that um, it's also interesting to talk a little bit more generically about what it is to design in an open world, what is specific about it. So I have some I would like to share some ideas around that. Okay. Um, so um, a couple, uh, even before I say this, so the reason, maybe talking about a little bit of the reason I started uh, Oxygen uh, Squared. Um, uh, back then, a year ago, I was um, in a rough place. Um, and I, I decided that it was about time. Um, almost 10 years have passed since the end of former action. I thought it was a good idea to start to start again. And maybe if I, one thing that I want to mention here, the, ephemeral, the ephemerality of, of designing an open set on, on, uh, on the open space and designing for big projects like Giddy. Um, when I was designing, when we were designing, not me alone at all, um, uh, Oxygen, um, one thing that was fairly obvious to me is uh, the, transient, the, transient, the transient nature of it. Um, and um, I, I, I knew all, all from the beginning, since the first meeting I had with the guys, that uh, it was something that was going to last a few years, and then it would be trashed. Um, because that's the nature of design. It's not like the best code in the world might live for a long, long time. You maintain it, it's it's really good, uh, you build upon it, and it moves on and keeps on being patched and 
improved uh, because the validity of the code itself remains. Uh, design is not like that. Uh, unfortunately, design um, is a product of time, of its time, and it's meaningful while it um, while it retains some uh, some today, uh, some some relevance to the to the today where it's being used. So it, for me, it's always obvious that Oxygen uh, Original was ephemeral and it was going to end up in a, a day. Um, so when, a team, when, a, when, the, the time, when the time came and it was mostly when uh, a new cute was uh, lurking in and I knew, okay, a new plasma is going to come out, a new KDE is going to come out, maybe it's a good idea to, to kill this and, and or stop it a bit and see what else the, the nature of design uh, creates inside TV. And uh, amazingly, uh, things work out really well and we have Briz today. Um, but yeah, the, I wanted to mention that uh, designing, and it's just only for open source, uh, it's a little bit everywhere, but it, on, on, on open source, we do feel the ephemerality, oh my God, I should have, Use the better word <laughs> uh, uh, of it. So, what's the point? Uh, what's the point of, of of doing this thing if it's due when fresh away? Um, and to me, it was well the fun of creating it. Um, it's a lot of fun. I I don't know. Um, I feel the urge to. I always felt the urge to draw little things and communicate and do do something. And it it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to do oxygen back then, especially because I didn't know anything. Um, uh, and uh, just just getting the feedback and giving back to other people in KDE and that were doing that amazing work and I was giving back and getting communication from them, that was a lot of fun. Um, also scratching my itch, like there were the little things like KDE was awesome. I love KDE. I still love Kitty. Um, I still use Kitty. Uh, and, but uh, there was, you know, those little things that if you can fix it, it will be perfect. Uh, so I started uh, scratching those little hitches that uh, that I had that just a few, uh, you know, because it's almost perfect already. If I fix one or two things, it's going to be completely perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, and and so that was one of the reasons uh, working with great people. It's amazing um, uh, the, the the scope, and I can't uh, stress this enough about about doing design uh, in open source. Is that you get to you get two things, you get to work with some of the most brilliant, smart, good people I've ever met. Some of my best friends are uh, I met them through Kitty. Uh, my work started out from from KDE. It's an amazing experience that gets you a range of experience in the design space that is really really hard to to find in other areas in professional work. Those the type of problems that you are faced uh, when doing um, a complete desktop design is something that most designers don't. Uh, in their entire life, in their entire career, they don't face those those sort of questions or problems to to have to solve. So it's it's amazing, and the, the baggage that it gives you is, it gives you as a designer is great. Slight problem, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, that is uh, one of the problems. You, Something uh, like Oxygen was is, was and is, uh, I bet Breeze is also uh, extremely taxing on your time that you have available. Uh, and for me, when I was starting, uh, that was three times uh, more true because my experience was very tiny. Uh, so I had to do things three times. I even tried to do a complete black icon set uh, that people didn't like. I still. I still have that against you. Uh, and by you, I mean David. Uh, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, uh, we have to, I, I had to learn a lot and things take time. Uh, probably if I was doing it now, things go a lot faster because, you know, experience, but it's also not exactly the same thing. Um, doing something out of experience sometimes cuts your, uh, your, 
uh, innocence. And those kind of things do show up in the in a in the gene in in the truthness of a style. But yeah, it's it's life, and there's nothing I really can do about it. What we got uh, out of oxygen back then, um, so. That's actually something I, I, I like, and I'm quite proud about oxygen. Um, Design-wise, it's probably not the best thing ever. Um, I'm, sus I'm suspicious, right? Uh, asking me if, design if the design of oxygen was good or bad. Eh. Uh, and my, my opinion is suspected. But uh, to be very honest, I don't think it was the most brilliant uh, thing ever. But one thing was brilliant, is that before oxygen, um, the theming aspect on Kitty and most open source projects that, that I knew um, were pretty much based on, uh, okay, we'll do an icon set and that's it. We'll have a look at a couple of other things, but we mostly focus on an icon set and maybe a theme, but that was quite rare, more on the GNOME side. Uh, the, <clears throat> they add this look, but it is, was fairly a disconjunct, disconjuncted uh, effort. With auction, we that changed. The uh, auction that, by the way, was set up to be just an icon theme, uh, ended up being everything. Everything designed, we designed uh, everything on a on on a global scale. So not exactly like uh, 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 the breeze guys are doing right now, which is much more focused on on everything and the apps itself. But that that was the next step. I hope people would too, uh, and they did. Um, but before it wasn't like that, and uh, uh, with Oxygen and also the, the what GNOME was doing back then, thing design became platforms. The design in open source became actually platforms of uh, a, ra a range of work. And that was uh, something that I'm quite proud to be a, proud art, a part of it. And I think that any decently well-structured design uh, project um, in, in open source should aim to be. So uh, this is, uh, how does it work? Like, okay, you do design, but it comes out of nothing. Mostly, <laughs> but, but I do <laughs> ponder some questions. Um, and when I'm doing design for say a customer, I, I usually go with uh, three basic questions. Like I asked um, the, the customer, like, what do you do? Uh, what is the function of this? What's your user? And can you define yourself in three adjectives? Um, I, this is something I do. I probably many other designers do different questions. And if I answer, if I had to answer, or, or the answers to these questions, as far as I knew it in oxygen days, is that one, uh, and if you remember the question, uh, ooh, ooh, what we are, uh, as far as I know, uh, and uh, I looked it up, we are officially a desktop for Matthias uh girlfriend. Um, and this Okay, it, it, it's a myth, um, but I actually like this definition. Right? It, it on the core, it was um, a desktop uh, for human beings. Like it's for your girlfriend, for your mother, for your father, for your friends. It's um, it's a little bit more than a desktop to code a desktop. Uh, at least that uh, uh, this definition is is something I I really loved. Um, the users. So if you take that, uh, that I just said, and think about the users, you would say that they are everyone. But to be honest, internally, we were kind of focusing on two types of users. So we were focusing mostly on early adopters and text enthusiasts. So that gave us a little bit more, uh, a little bit more focus in terms of the design that we were creating uh, in terms of, of finding our uh, target group. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, the three adjectives I never got to ask, so I uh, uh, I use this ones internally. I and to be honest, I didn't ask this question because I didn't I didn't add the experience. But looking back, uh, I tried to answer it myself, and I I think back then, if I had to define my work, uh, it would be open, free, and positive. 
I always thought, to me, Kitty was always this. It was a very positive community uh, with freedom in mind and very open to contributions and to other people coming in. So, O2. Uh, as I said, so uh, last year I was not in the best place, um, and I, I I need to do something um, uh, for me, and I decided okay, let's let's do something that I know that I'm I'm happy with, uh, and doing oxygen work was probably it it was a lot of work, but one of the most uh, fun times of my life. So let's try this one more time with a lot more experience uh, and maybe this works. So one of the things that I didn't mention is that doing uh, a design uh, for not you with a user in mind um, is a very technical task. It's actually, it's very, people used to call us artists um, and it wasn't quite quite honest to to call a designer an artist because it's a fairly technical matter. We, we do do artsy things, but most of the decisions are actually quite rational or they should be uh, quite rational. So, uh, and, and they are done rationally with the user and the user expectations in mind and trying to deliver a function, trying to fulfill a function. So that, that's the sort of thing that we we're trying to do back then. But for Oxygen 2 or Oxygen Square or OO, um, I thought, okay, I'm going to do it for me. And I don't care about what everybody is going to say. If they like it, it's great. If they don't like it, they can complain to me. And by me, I mean my wife. Next. <laughs> um, if this goes to the next slide, yeah. Um, so my user, uh, that, that makes it simple. I already told you, it's me. Uh, and the, the, the three adjectives, I want to make it fun, because I want to have fun with it. Uh, I want to make it cool. That's a very blanket uh, statement. And I want to make it yours. Uh, right? That works. Great plan. One of the advantage is that now it might not be as ephemeral because now, uh, since I'm making it for myself and I'm not really making such uh, a design thing and more over artsy whatever I want to communicate with you guys, maybe this is less ephemeral because it's more of an art installment. Maybe this works. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so uh, and and what is uh, what is supposed to have? Um, okay, um, it it's a thing. It's it's basically oxygen. I'll be honest. Basically, all the things that old oxygen was. Uh, I'm trying to go to do it in uh, this new thing. So it's a widget theme, a plasma theme, an icon theme, and everything theme. Um, so that's that's the goal, uh, including anything that's needed. Um, uh, I will try to do minus the application integration stuff and uh, all of that because it's that is such a sinkhole of time. Props and respect to the to the people that do that all the time. Um, some plans. So I, I, this I'm only talking about the the plans that I had. Uh, I have some over the years developed a couple of plans and one thing that I. Uh, at the end of, Ox of old auction, I, I thought that was fairly obvious is that consistency and the way we say consistency sometimes doesn't mean really consistency. Uh, the consistency, it was kind of hope that if every app used a, the same widget theme, the same colors and the same icons, it would be consistent. That wasn't quite true because apps sometimes are not the same and the consistent is not just adding same size buttons with the same colors. Uh, if one app has 10, a row of 10 buttons and another one is just as one, we didn't save anything. Uh, it's inconsistency. Uh, it, it's in, they, those two are very inconsistent. So what we had helped 
but I think to express and to give better uh, better uh, experiences to users, um, things like information density, uh, the way we draw things, uh, what we express is actually more important than the just having everything the same. Um, so I want to enable a, a oxygen squared experience where you get a file um, and everything changes. So it, it doesn't even matter that applications do look different. Like for example, we do already, like Krita doesn't look uh, the same as uh, uh, Dolphin. Um, because Krita has its own needs. It's actually very, uh, that leads to the next point I was going to mention, it's very dense in terms of information and tools that it requires. And uh, that was one thing that we missed dearly in the back in the old days is it was really hard to make applications that were very um, dense in terms of, of tools and uh, um, interaction points because historically we were very I, I used to call it framey framey we used to have loads of frames on top of frames it, it made it difficult for for application developers to create um, nice um, balanced UIs where the where an application that actually needs like Krita a, a lot of tools on the side uh, could actually make those tools available without cluttering and pestering everything because they are so big and there's so much widgetry uh, against it. Um, so uh, that was that's one thing that I would like Oxygen to be able to provide. Uh, it, uh, a um, application can look different and still look consistent. An application can still have one application can have tons of information, another one be very clean, and they still fit. They still like they still look like they belong in the same space. So I would like to actually, one of the things that Oxygen should do, uh, Oxygen 2 should do, is, is have this experience button. Like you click, you get uh, a button, someone that gets you the full experience, and boom, you get uh, what, for now, uh, is my perfect desktop. Okay, that's the idea, was, you'll see. So, Currently, uh, and by currently, I mean as it was when I was starting on this. I started with uh, with a widget theme because if I, in my brain, if I would nail the widget theme, I would actually have 90% of the work uh, done. Because in my real day-to-day -day life, that's actually it, and when I it, it, there's a talk by a designer that she's she's amazing, and she goes about the the solemn and the uh, and the artwork. Um, and uh, in my day to day work, doing the first mockups, that's the artwork. It takes it doesn't take all that long, but that's where you define the core identity of what you want to be and what you should be. And this these guys took me like two months to to come up with, and I was super happy, super stoked that I think I nailed it. I think I have some, a good language here that is scalable, that I can push into further directions, that I can do multiple things with, and it was really working well for me. I thought, okay, this is going way, way faster because uh, back, back in the beginning, uh, when Oxygen came out, I remember I went through like months of iterations over, the widget style and the window decoration style for all auction. And this came out really quickly and I actually like it. Uh, I think it scales nicely. I made lots of work in trying to make the the things work in big sizes and small sizes that so that they look like they belong, but they still give you the freedom to have very sparse UIs uh, in terms of again, information density, and also very cluttered UIs in terms of information density without looking very cluttered. So if you notice the, the everything is very, I try to make everything very subtly present. It's present, but it's not overwhelmingly present. Therefore, I can um, add this more, uh, this, this gap um, 
available. And also give it a little bit more freedom, expressive freedom, so things can be, some buttons, an application might like a button to be round, another application might like a button to be at only round corners, uh, one might even like to have square corners. Um, as long as things actually look like they belong together, I think we could get it. And I, I was, I'm fairly happy with this, guys. So um, the only thing that I wasn't, uh, I'm still not nailed completely is the multiple colors. So another thing that I was thinking uh, when, when doing this is based on, um, on the work that, uh, you know, the, the Finnish company that spun off out of uh, Nokia days, Yola, um, they had this uh, mobile uh, experience. And one thing I loved about it um, was the possibility to choose a wallpaper and magically it would make your UI have a color palette. So if you know color palettes for for widgets in uh, in the cute world, in the KDE world, it's a mess, uh, to put it mildly. It's tons and tons and tons and tons of options, and just setting up the colors cohesively, it's a lot of work. And it shouldn't be. Uh, when I have to come up with a palette for an application, most, I just pick one, two, three, four colors, and all of the other curdles that I need actually come naturally. And I believe there's a certain algorithm to it um, that will would allow us to, with a very simple base, generate all the colors, which would allow us finally to maybe do the thing that you all did, just pick a wallpaper, say, do you want to apply the entire, you, this, uh, do you want to make a color palette out of this wallpaper? Yes, uh, see how it works. I, I have a suspicion that it could work. Um, uh, but I'm uh, struggling a little bit about the transitional colors for the backgrounds of windows. So this is a zoom and I'm showing the dark window um, that I'm really happy with. The concept is around stone, so maybe a uh, basalt type of stone. And I'm really happy the dark colors actually work really well. The light colors, um, I only got it to work okay-ish on, on, on this variant, which is kind of not a rock. So I, I tried to think about white rocks that I like or light rocks that I like. And the marble is a no, unless it's a very weird um, uh, window decoration. Maybe some people would like it, I wouldn't. Um, and the macros and uh, limestone, it doesn't lend itself really well, really well on, on macro pictures. So I ended up with this kind of um, uh, surface of uh, pearls, you know, the, the, the inside of a shell, that's uh, that glittery, colory uh, reflections. I think that could work. It's just not working for other variations. It works really well on a very white, um space when i start to implement yellows and greens and lime greens and stuff it just looks weird it probably doesn't lend itself to 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 those sort of colors um all styles are not not like that they always struggle with this sort of thing i just thought i could do for any color but maybe i can't It seems we've lost Nuno, perhaps. Oh, I see him already rec reconnecting. No, are you here? Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Please continue. Okay, uh, let me show you something. Do not use the side button on your mouse. It will take you out of the window of your browser. Bad idea. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so where was I? Okay, so uh, here I am. The the problem is the real world. Let's let's face reality. The plans are amazing, um, and I'm totally okay with the ethos of the style, the general ideas. I I love them all, most of them, and and so what's the problem? Um, the problem is a little bit what I believe I need, 
and what I can live without. Uh, without. Um, so when I was starting this, I was starting much uh, and thinking, how hard can it be based on my day-to-day -day experience? And when I'm doing uh, design for a client, I think, okay, I, if I do the, the general mock-ups, um, I have a couple of, of, and if I do the same thing that I just did there, uh, I think I'm mostly done. It's okay. Um, uh, here I did found a problem, and I'll talk about this problem right away. Oh, uh, also, <laughs> in real world uh, time, uh, this guy says that it's relative. Yeah, uh, I can run as fast as I can. It's not being any relative to me. 24 hours are still only 24 hours. And it, it is mostly for me and for other people. Um, turns out that me, um, not the greatest user ever. Um, I'm a whiny bitch. I can say that because <laughs> myself. Uh, um, I was doing things and I, uh, so me, the user, uh, was starting to like it. Yeah, good job, good job. Pat on the back. Uh, but then uh, I told, me, me, the user, told me, the designer, to, okay, it, it's time that you do the icons, which shouldn't be too much of a work because um, uh, these days, icons uh, um, are supposed to be simple. Um, I, I'm from the day that uh, I actually got mad when this... Um, uh, anti skeuomorphic blah blah thing came to be, and I felt like I was being insulted with it. Um, but then I realized, yeah, yeah it's the end of a, a, an era, a something new is beginning. Um, but these new icons that uh, are being done these days um, in multiple platforms, to me, it takes like yeah, minutes to do. It's it's a little bit absurd. It, uh, and action icons, I can spawn them over in minutes. The problem is that me, the user, was really not liking them. And I decided, okay, I need to do something that is simple, but flexible, that can do lots of things, but that is modern, that is great. And I did, uh, I did post uh, a couple of versions that I thoroughly deleted from all our drives to never to be seen again. Um, uh, about possible solutions and languages that would allow us to do uh, lots of uh, some icons. Not, that was probably the problem. So they were pretty, they were engaging, and they were simple, but they didn't scale. Uh, it's, it was a great, most of those languages that I tried, um, either I didn't like it or um, they didn't scale in terms of variability that we need. Uh, a if this is if this was the client's work, we're talking about I don't know. Uh, in terms of I, uh, action icons, the ones that you see in the app, we're talking about 30, 40 icons. Uh, in terms of application icon, it's one. In terms of branding, it's the application icon with a little bit of flair, um, and to, and maybe there's a mime type. So that's easy. That scales really nicely. At most, uh, it's a set of applications, so we need a little bit. Of of, of uh, consistency, of course, uh, across application icons that do have a branding aspect to it. Um, but that's fairly easy. In Oxygen, not so much. We're talking thousands of icons. And it wasn't scaling for me. And this got me really depressed. Uh, and for, I don't know, six, seven months, I didn't touch this at all. I, I looked at it and hoped that, because sometimes things uh, uh, happen like this. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I stopped working it, and some by magic, one fine day, an idea comes up, and I go for it. Um, but no, uh, it didn't came. And uh, the only thing that got me is more and more depressed. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that wasn't a nice place to be. Um, turns out that kind of like this old oxygen stuff because i was I'm, I'm still to this day using the things that i did again bias um so it's not like it's terrible okay a few things like are bad yeah i knew that they were bad 10 years ago so they are still bad today i haven't fixed them 
but maybe I could start with, with this until, you know, that grand idea comes. So I decided, okay, for now, let's use oxygen and um, the old oxygen icons and move them to, to the Git repo and let's start with this and try to evolve the other stuff. Um, and so I did, uh, but a couple of missing, uh, so I, I, okay, let's have a look at the current state of affairs. Like if I want to start really doing this, I need to look at the, how things are looking today. And uh, the first thing I open is system settings. Let's see how system settings looks under Braze and compare it to how it looks in Oxygen. And the first thing I see, oh, Oxygen is missing a couple of icons. I need to fix that. So I went and fixed that. <laughs> uh, and it was, I think it was the, the printer and QD Connect, I think those were missing. And there were another one that was missing. So I, I did those. And okay, and I pushed them to auction. So now it's uh, auction is, after many, many years, has been upgraded a bit. Um, and I did a few more. So I did, I, I, I started, okay, this is, I, I started having fun again. Um, and I, okay, let, let me just fix this and this and this. And I ended up fixing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a couple more that uh, I are not visible on the screen. Um, and I was having fun, right? And that, that's the point, right? Having fun is the is, is my goal. Um, and now the idea started to, to grow in me like, hmm, maybe auction wasn't really that bad. Okay, if I kill these, if I would kill these and maybe these, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm into something. Maybe maybe just adjusting uh, a new option could be could be something. So these are some of the ones that I worked on. And now, okay. By the way, <laughs> having me as a user is the worst case. So uh, these are icons that are only used in 32 by 32 pixels. Why do I have to do them in this huge sizes? Because I'm the worst user. That's all I have to say. Um, so I, I, uh, I decided, but it's, it's an experiment, right? I'm trying to experiment and trying to see the flexibility of the solution to see if I can do something better. And these are icons that I can actually relate to. I, I actually like them. I think they are, they are modern enough and they will work. There is um, so uh, a uh, point there, so below this guy here is the action icon. I think action icons, I will need to do them in line art. Action icons are, you know, action icon, we in open source, uh, in our sets, we tend to divide things into categories. And one of the main categories are action icons. And action icons are the icons that you see in, uh, inside applications. And in auction, they were really very visually heavy. They were artsy. And maybe that's not what the user wants. The, the, user, the user uses them mostly as a quick guide to reach a tool. It doesn't need to marvel at the beauty of an icon, which most of them didn't have anyway. So maybe those I want to do uh, in small size. I'm not sure about the 48. So there's multiple size. There's 16. 24 or 22, depending, uh, 32 and 48. Maybe 48 in some apps are good, um, but uh, I'll have to have a look about that. Uh, but we'll keep on evolving on that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that action icons will be line art type of thing. Um, and now this this actually leads into us having a language. Um, I think. Sorry, sorry, no, no, to to uh, pause you here a moment. We do have uh, two minutes left, um, just to as a reminder. Yep, I'm almost done. This is the almost last uh, uh, slide. Um, so uh, really quickly, uh, I I think I have a language here. If I stick to basically these shapes that if you notice I'm doing on the previous slide. So it's basically, okay, I know the, the last the last shape was a cube and that implies uh, a, a type of angle. We we'll, can look at objects front forward, but only tilting it here. So we don't tilt it all over the place like we did in auction. So this is a, a tool and trying to focus more on consistency of shapes using the same shapes to to 
to to generate similar things a bit like i'm doing here as you notice like connections and device connections same basic shape and doing the two help recognizability using the square as a, a thing and i'll use squares for devices but that's the idea i don't know if that works uh so apparently my almost almost time um if you want to uh so i really like the the talk that jerry ellsworth did uh, on Academy. That was amazing. And she was talking about uh, mentors. Right. So I had the best mentors in when I joined uh, KDE. I had Debbie Vignoni, I had Kenneth Wimmer, I had uh, a little bit of Everaldo even, um, and lots of people with lots of experience that helped me a lot in, in becoming a designer today. So if you want to join in to this and also be a user of this, aka also for you, uh, you can contact me there. That's the URL for the for the oxygen stuff. I need help in lots of things. I will need help for the widget theme. I will need for plasma for maybe uh, uh, plasma uh, uh, for plasma. Yes, for uh, components. And please join me uh, for mentoring, design, fun. I'll try to help you guys. I don't have time for it. For questions. Uh, thank you, Nuno. Indeed, we have run out of time for questions, but one of the questions was posted by Alesh, who's the next speaker. So maybe he doesn't mind if you answer his <laughs> about that. Uh, the question is, do you still expect users to render icons from a pixel map in a world with high DPI displays? Uh, do we have two hours to discuss how much I hate SVG for rendering? I love SVG, that's the tool I use every day. But you don't want to get me started on that discussion. OK, thank you. There's also, <laughs> a question, there's also a question from Marco Martin, maybe just quickly. Palette generated from the wallpaper. What do you think it should happen when there are multiple screens with different wallpapers? That's why I don't, um, that's why I don't like Martin. He always makes the worst questions. I hate you, Martin. <laughs> Well, in theory, in terms of the of the user experience, like it would be an option to the user, so it's the it's not automatically the user uh, chooses the wallpaper, and a secondary option or secondary a question that is made to the user is, do you want to create to generate the theme out of this wallpaper? So it's uh, it's on the user. It's not it's it's not trying to. Because, yeah, Marco make, makes an awesome point. If it was auto automatic and we have multiple papers, nothing looks good. No, just just one and maybe in the secondary option. And still, it's just an idea that I had. I, I actually don't know. OK, thank you very much, Nuno, for this presentation. Um, uh, thank you again. and. Uh, Hope you stick with us for the last uh, talk and then the closing remarks uh, as well. Thanks, Nuno.